Today in lab, you're going to be learning about vectors with the force table. So the purpose of this lab is to practice your addition. As force is a vector, you're just going to be adding up all these different forces. Next, you're going to talk about verifying the conditions of equilibrium, which we'll discuss in a moment, and you're going to find the mass of unknown objects, two to be exact. So in this lab, we're going to be talking about forces. And the simplest definition of a force is just a push or pull. In this case, we're going to be studying the force of gravity, or weight, and that's just going to be caused by the mass acted upon by gravity. So the formula for this is just mass times acceleration due to gravity, g. Now, very important, you remember that this mass hanger right here is 5 grams. This will factor in everything that you're going to do. And then we're going to add up these force vectors. So if you're pulling this way and this way, this is the same as taking that second vector, putting it right here, and your resultant would go here. Again, when you add vectors, you always go tip of one arrow to tail of the other. So while we're doing this, we are going to verify the equilibrium condition. And equilibrium says that the sum of all forces is equal to zero. So every force that you add in this, in this case you're going to have three, F1, F2, and F3. When you add all of those together, you're going to get zero. So as you can see in this lab, your purpose is to bring balance to the force. So this is a picture of your force table. And if you'll notice, there are little markings for angle all the way around. And if you pay special close attention, you'll notice that this is the 180 degree line, and this is the 90 degree line. And that should be a little straighter, but I am sorry. So if we were to have a force vector going through here, and again this would be like, the weight of the object on that hanger, and we call this force F, the magnitude of F would be mg, the mass times the hanger, and we can break this into components. So the x component along the x-axis, y component on the y-axis. So if you look at trig, this angle theta, which you read directly from the table, F of x would equal the adjacent side, so this would be F cosine theta, and your y component would be F times sine of theta. And the best news about this is all of your arguments, theta, like plus and minus arguments, theta takes care of the sine. So you don't have to worry about am I in the positive or the negative x direction, because theta will take care of your sign, no matter where you happen to be. If you don't believe me, try going this way, and you will see that your y component right here is positive, and then if you take f cosine of 145, you'll find out that your x component's negative. So a couple of things to watch for. You need to make sure that this rope right here is flat, and here you can see that it isn't. So what you do, is you just move your hand over and tilt that up. And that takes care of it. So you want that to be perfectly flat. So if I scrolled back, I want you to take a look at this mass hanger real quick. And a couple of things with the mass hanger. This peg is pretty flimsy, so be very careful whenever you take things off of it or put them on. So those are two big things. Make sure your string is straight. And also, make sure that this little hanging peg is treated fairly nice. So we've covered how to use it. This is what it looks like. So you, you want this white ring to be in this little black circle and you want it to be perfectly in that center. The other thing you want to double check is that the angle you read here, 90, is the same as the angle you read right here on the intersection. And if it's not, just move that little string with your thumbnail so that the angle here and the angle here is the same. 
So if we show you what's going to happen as you do this lab, you're going to add masses carefully. It will apply your force vectors right here. And as you can see, you will keep adjusting them until it goes right in there. All right. And again, the key component, you're breaking this into something along your x component and something in the y direction. When you have this, add a couple extra grams of mass to each one until this ring goes out of focus again, until it's outside of that black line, and that gives you the amount of error that this mass can be off by. So on part A, you've got masses hanging from 0, 90, and 240. Now this should be pretty helpful as components for these two are going to cancel out. You're only going to have one component for here, x component, and y component. Now on this, you are going to be solving for one unknown. So just put that mass on this 240 and then solve for it. Part B, you are going to pick the angles. Pick angles. Nothing in a multiple of 90. Nothing on 0. Nothing, you know, don't make it too easy. No 120, 240 either. Just make sure your angles are interesting because otherwise you know eh, if it's all 120 apart you know they're gonna balance and then you're going to solve for two unknowns at the same time it's a bit of a bear but if you walk closely ask for help we're more than happy to walk through this with you so first do one unknown change the angles up and solve for two unknowns there are a few places in this lab where error is. You can find error in the masses. Typically, the manufacturer reports this to plus or minus 1%. However, you have 3, so you get 3 times 1% because you have 3 mass hangers. Next, you have uncertainty in the apparatus. This is plus or minus grams on your heaviest hanger. So this is the step we described in that last little bit. And then, you have an uncertainty in the unknown masses, and you get this from, from the balance. And again, you're going to read this balance incredibly close. One final point that I want to make is that you have at least 50 grams on each hanger. This will minimize the amount of error for the second source over here because you'll have you know, one part in 50 as opposed to one part in 3. So at least 50 grams on each hanger. Overlap. So just to recap, you're going to do one unknown at 0, 90, 240. Two unknowns using, well, what we'll describe as random angles. Be sure to measure your angles very carefully. So go in, read between the line on your angles, and your error analysis giving you your actual value, which is what you get from the balance, compared to your calculated value. And that is the force table lab, so please ask any questions and hope this helps.